Okay, I'm going to start. Welcome, my name is Lee Chantel, and um, today I'm going to talk about how to communicate better, how to rise above negativity online, and focus on our core aims and goals. And so we're going to talk about um, online etiquette a bit, dealing with negativity online. I've spoken to all of you about some issues, so we'll cover those as well. Um, so I've been vegan for 20 years, just celebrated my 20th year in January. So there's a lot of changes I've noticed over that time. Some good, some bad. And um, there's a lot more people who know, welcome ladies, who know of the term vegan nowadays. Um, there's a lot more people who know the pro how to pronounce it. <laughs> Lots of people used to go, oh, vegan or something. I hear a few people still say that, but most people know vegan. You know, that's pretty good. Um, but I do also think the mainstream media in particular is focusing more on the food aspects of veganism and the plant-based aspects, whereas veganism encompasses a lot more than just what you eat or don't eat. So um, just be aware of what mainstream media is doing and just try and stay on top of things and put your two cents in as well. So in when, when I first went vegan, I was a vegetarian two years before I went vegan, and when I first went vegan, I was quite um, maybe angry or aggressive um, as much as I can be, because I'm not very much like that. But um, I remember I, I went vegan because of the animals. And I just thought, I'm going to tell everyone everything I know about all the animal cruelty, and they'll go vegan too, won't they? Obviously, you know? <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> um, that doesn't quite happen. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that. And that's really hard to understand. And it's really hard to um, deal with people that you love, in particular family or, you know, someone you're seeing or dating or a partner when you love them in many ways and they agree with you in so many other ways but it's something that's a core value to you or maybe your biggest core value they just disagree with so we want to be um, accepting of everyone we want people to accept us as vegans we also want to accept other people as non-vegans and remember that we all um, I don't know if anyone in here I'm assuming but most of us were not born vegan okay and once we have, once we ourselves have come to some sort of realization, whether it is, I'm going to be vegan, this, this is why, we sometimes forget how it was before. So we forget how we thought or the things we felt about before we went vegan. So sometimes, and most cases, we have to really remind ourselves of how other people might be seeing things, okay? So try and keep that in mind when you're dealing with people. Not just online, but just in in day to day life. The past couple of years, I've really been focusing on non attachment and non judgment, um, and that's really helped me. So instead of having a conversation with someone trying to convert them to being a vegan, and you know, emailing them or ringing them or you vegan yet or something like that, I'm like, cool. I'm just going to plant seeds. I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to educate these people. Then whatever happens, I don't have any control over that. It's up to up to the universe, up to that person. So I would that's another one of my tips. If you can really work on that, and sometimes you really, really have to work on those things. But the more you work on it, the easier it will become. So just think about that and try not to have attachment to any outcomes. And I don't just mean veganism, I just mean life in general. It just makes your life so much easier if you're not attached to outcomes. And I really think that um, everyone as a vegan and even non-vegans, we're all doing the best that we can in the best way we know how. So you might not agree with the way some people are doing things, but keep in mind that they probably think that's the best way for them to get across whatever message they're trying to get across. Um, as my um, 20 years vegan, um, a lot of people ask me, what's your best tip? What's the best thing you can tell people? And my best tip would be to lead by example and be consistent. Okay? So if you can grasp that, that's a good start. And um, how many people have been vegan, or how many people were vegan, first off? So preaching to the converted mostly here. And what about how long have you been vegan? A year? 
over five years. Okay, so a lot of newbies in the room. Um, lucky I'm here to guide you. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. So um, you might not you might not know how to compare. So I'll just paint you a picture. Um, Twenty years ago, myself, female, saying I was vegan. Most people, especially the men, would not really care what I said because they just thought it was a very emotive response. It was an emotive response from a female, it doesn't really matter. So back then I did, I got qualifications in naturopathy, nutrition, Western herbal medicine. And I noticed once I had those qualifications, I'm no longer practicing, but once I had those qualifications, people took what I said on board more. So people respected that I had qualifications, knew what I was talking about, was talk, could talk about the health aspects, nutrition aspects, not just the emotional sort of stuff, which is what they thought I liked to talk about. So that's how things used to be nowadays, um, back in the day. Nowadays, a lot more people online don't really have any qualifications whatsoever and are giving a lot of advice. So there's people online who um, are quite aggressive, who are quite loud, and who have a lot of followers. Now these people, doesn't mean they know anything more or any better than the other people, okay? And a lot of people who start as vegans go to the people who are the most popular, the loudest, the ones that get the most views. And I know a lot of people who've learned from these people and maybe see through some of the things that they do, and then they go on to something else. So um, just be aware that there's a lot of vegans and there's a lot of types of vegans and there's a lot of different people that are giving their own interpretation of things. Of that. Um, I would say people that are purely focused on, say, fruit or yeah. cycling or um, yeah. on posing half naked or um, just you know, their food, yeah. things like that. So not meaning to be judging of anyone, obviously, um, but and a lot of those people have brought people to veganism or made them aware of it who wouldn't have otherwise. So they're, they're doing a good service, but they're not the only people out there, and that's not the only information. And a lot of these people are giving health advice and nutritional advice without any qualifications for it whatsoever. So be very mindful of that too. And um, so I just want to think about for new vegans, how you can rise above some of this aggression, anger, and um, negativity, I guess, online. And this is how people get views nowadays. I'm sure we all know about the fake news and fake truths and stuff like that. So um, Facebook set us all up for how we're interacting now in real life. They said, we, we don't want to see too much text. We want to see more images. We want to see more videos. And so we did that so you could get your pages being seen so we could get interaction with people. That's what's spread nowadays and in particular stuff that's emotive and emotional. So it doesn't matter about facts anymore. If you can be emotive about something and talk about it, that's what's spreading. So I really want you to focus on rising above that sometimes and giving people information. You can give people information you know, in different formats. It doesn't have to be all text. You can you know, do some really cool stuff without it being text. And um, all our time and energy is limited. So we really want to work out how to use that the best way we can. And I personally think that um, interacting with people and getting involved in um, debates and discussions and name calling is not a good use of your time. It's not a constructive way to use your time. So if you're doing that a lot, maybe we'll try something different from tomorrow. And um, I just want, uh, things I'm focusing on this year in particular is listening more and saying less. So try and think of those things in regards to communication and how to communicate better, and particularly online. So um, some of the things I just want to talk about is about the language we use and just to be mindful of what we're saying. So um, just think, think about what you're doing online the way you're communicating with other people, what you're saying and what you're sharing. Is it positive or is it negative? Is it encouraging 
or is it discouraging? Is it empathetic or is it judgmental? Is it preaching or is it teaching? Now these are some different ways that I've seen a lot of different people interact online and there's many ways people can react online and interact online and there's a lot of people who are new vegans that ask questions or even are interested in veganism who ask questions and you know I've been asked certain questions thousands literally thousands of times but for that one person this could be the first time they're even thinking about it the first time that's come into their head or the first person they've been able to even have a conversation about a question and so try and keep that in mind when you're interacting with people this might be the first time I'm just going to answer and you don't have to give too many facts you don't have to give too many statistics it doesn't have to be a massive you know um, too many paragraphs it's just speak from the heart get get to the point immediately and just share that with someone and um, then people may have questions back and you'll be able to work out who's trolling you or who isn't. So who's actually asking a question or who's just trying to annoy you. And some other things about language that I've seen a lot online and you know vegans, I remember years ago when I first realized not every vegan was like me. You know, and not every vegan is even nice, you know, and um, there's a lot of people who I know that aren't vegan who are awesome people, and there's a lot of vegans I know who are horrible people, okay, so just because someone's vegan doesn't automatically mean they're a nice person or even someone you want to hang out with, and that's fine, that's okay. When I, when I first was creating my vegan tribe, I just hung out with anyone that was vegan, that was it, I just wanted to be around vegan people. But after a few years, I learned, mm, don't really like that person that much. Much prefer someone else's time than that person's time. And you just go through and work out who best suits your world. And this includes online. You don't have to be friends with everyone just because your other friends are or because they're cool or because you like their blog or something. You don't have to follow them. And I've seen a lot of racist language online. And in particular, um, for different cultures, so for example, um, Japan and whaling or dolphins, um, the Middle East and the life trade, China and dog meat. So I'm not sure if you have seen it, but I've seen a lot of people saying particular things that are really racist and not helpful because they disagree with these areas. And um, you just have to be really careful about the way that you're presenting yourself as a vegan, as a person online and there's also some other words that I call trigger words that when you use online they may really upset someone like truly cause them pain and these words could be slave rape and concentration camp and I see these words thrown about quite often and we don't need to be using negative words to promote our mission and our goals um, and I've also seen a lot of unsolicited health advice online. Have you guys seen that? Um, in particular, um, just just ridiculous things. People, you know, people that are in wheelchairs, you know, be vegan and you'll be cured, or um, just anything. So veganism is awesome. It's so great. It has wonderful health benefits, but it's not a cure all. And this is what a lot of um, the people we were talking about before can promote at the beginning to people. Go vegan, you'll lose weight, you'll get clear skin, you'll have better sex life, you'll this, this, this. There's all these things people claim you'll get from being vegan. What happens when someone goes vegan to lose weight and they put on weight? They're probably not going to stay vegan for very long. So we want to be promoting things that are actually true and definitely different people can react and their bodies can act in different ways than other people. But if we focus on the things that are true and scientifically proven, that's the best things to do in regards to health and nutrition. 
And there's some awesome people around like um, Nutrition Facts and Michael Greger. Do you guys know him? Oh, yeah, he's, yeah he's awesome. He does wonderful stuff. So he's a good place to start. And um, That's a great book. How yeah, not to die. How Not to Die is I awesome, isn't it? Actually, yeah. It's like this thick, it's but it, he's, he's such a funny person. Oh, he's great. And um, he writes just as he is in person mm. too, and definitely suggest that if you don't have it. And um, I don't know how much it is over here. No, yeah, well, I, bought it, I, I saw him speak in Birmingham last mm -hmm. year, and oh. he was selling them for a tenner. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, so was, yeah, so I was going to say if you can't get it cheap over here, you try and encourage it. your library to. You stock can get up. it on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I spotted it. I was betting. I got mine on Amazon. Did you? Was, was it expensive? I think mine is eight ninety nine. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty cheap. Any cheaper? Than you? Mine, <laughs> too. Oh, mine, too. mine was Kindle. Oh, Kindle. Oh, there you go. That's Kindle. Yeah. I've got a signed one too. Yeah. Oh, you can get that. Bless me. So he's a good example. Michael Greger and nutritionfacts.org. And um, I really am trying to focus on this year how we can work better with other people and create allies of the movement. So um, my so I've been vegan 20 years. I've run a website called vivalavegan.net for over a decade. And um, I'm also now the new president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, which is my home state in Australia, in case you couldn't tell from my accent. <laughs> and, um, I'm trying to work out, I've been doing a lot of things over the years. I used to run a not-for-profit too, I put on a lot of vegan festivals and events in Brisbane. How do we get to the people we need to get to? We're at a certain place and a lot of people think we're at the best place at the moment, but we still have a lot of work to do. And when I see people interacting with other people, well, whether it's like avatar workers, farmers, um, teachers, whoever that people have a problem with, MPs and politicians. The, the way that most vegans interacting or publishing their thoughts about certain things are really not positive and really not going to help us long term. So it's a, it's a long goal, long strategy that I see and that I think about. But I see a lot of people, and when I say young vegans, I mean someone that's like a year vegan. And you see a lot of these young vegans come through and they're very, very agitated. They're very aggressive and they want to change the world. And they've got this amount of enormous energy, which is awesome. But they just need to be able to use that energy in a positive way. And I've got lots of ways, if you want to help, that I, you know, I can draw you in the right direction. But some of these people just want to make things happen now. And they don't necessarily work with the people who are already around, the groups that are already around, animal liberation groups, the vegetarian and vegan societies, things like that. There's a lot of people that are already doing stuff that's awesome. So that would be a good start that I would say for people to get involved with that. And um, we need to learn from other movements. So how have other movements got people involved? And one of the movements I like to focus on is the LGBTQI community. So if you think about that community and how lots of people know about it, how lots of people know about the ideas, and a lot of people support the movement, whether or not they're gay or lesbian. So how can we do something like that with veganism, that we're getting allies to the movement, whether or not they're vegan, whether or not they're vegan enough, how do we use all these people that can really help promote the movement and get it to that 10%. And once we get to that 10% of the population that are vegan, then it's just going to snowball. So have, have a think about that. What's Love, the percentage now? Uh, they say one to 2%, depending. Is it growing? Yeah. Um, well, it depends, it depends what you class as vegan. So to me, that would be pe people who not only eat a plant-based diet, but who follow the ethical mm -hmm. aspects. And um, there's a lot of studies that say that's one to 2% of the population and that necessarily hasn't changed for 20 years. But if there's a lot of positive sort of mainstream media stuff at the moment where lots of people are eating a plant-based diet. There's a lot of people who are consuming more vegan meals. Welcome. What an entrance. <laughs> um, can, yeah, consuming more plant-based meals, consuming more vegan meals, doesn't necessarily mean they're vegan. So if you just keep that, yeah. that in mind. 
And yeah, it's just about planting seeds. I like to say planting seeds of change. So we're not trying to convert someone. We're not trying to win an argument. I'm saying, hey, what are you interested in? I'd like to hear what you're interested in, what you're about, what you do in your, in your life, and how I can have a conversation and maybe put a few put a few seeds in there. If you're interested in animals, you know, did you know pigs are just as loyal as dogs? Interested in fitness? Have you heard about some of the vegan runners that are here? Or I have a vegan athletes book I just released. So, you know, there's a hundred, over a hundred people I've interviewed in that. What about health? We can talk about nutrition facts. There's so many different areas that you can find out what someone is passionate about, what someone cares about, and just find something to talk to them about. And that's what it is. It's having a conversation and talking to someone about something they maybe didn't know before. And um, online, I just really want more people to be nice and to be kind, okay? So I'm a speaker and a consultant, and I give a lot of talks in regards to social media, social media marketing, online etiquette, all that sort of stuff. So today we're just going to talk a bit about online etiquette. And um, I don't know if everyone here knows how to be nice or how to be kind. Bit of a worry there with that response. So <laughs> we just have to keep practicing. If you're not, if you're not very comfortable, if you don't know how to be nice or be kind, just keep doing it. Something more each day, and it'll it'll just come to you over time. So focus on that, and um, maybe pledge to do something nice every day or kind. And we can disagree and we can debate with people online and in person without name calling, without swearing at people, without having a fit online or anything like that. We don't need to be judgmental to be able to do that. And I have a lot of friends who aren't vegan. And a lot of my vegan friends cannot understand that. Um, but, you know, they're really awesome people. We have awesome conversations. You know, we do heaps of non-vegan things together. And these people are really good allies. Some of them become vegetarian. Some of them eat more vegan or vegetarian um, meals all the time. They really cook me some great vegan food whenever I go to visit. And I would call them allies of the movement because they're promoting it and they're spreading the word about veganism to their friends that are non-vegan. And I don't really have to do any work, do I? They can cook for me, that's good. <laughs> And also, it's really important that you think about you might be the only vegan that someone knows, that someone's come into contact with, okay? So you standing there having a conversation with someone or online, the way you're interacting with people, that might be the only time someone has met or interacted with a vegan, okay? So is that a good interaction or is it a bad interaction? It's up to you to work on. I'm sure there with some of those responses at the front. <laughs> so, um, and whether you like it or not, what you do and how you do it, it reflects the whole movement. Okay? And there's a lot of people who've said to me over the years, um, oh, I would have gone vegan 10 years ago if it wasn't for that person that was really rude to me or this person that said that or that person online. And we were talking before about groups. And um, there's a lot of people who join vegan or vegetarian groups on Facebook or pages on Facebook that they really just want information. They're there just to learn, to find out something new. My dad, my mum, my sister, they're vegan. just want to find out more about why they do this. And the amount of people that I've heard from that have joined these groups and pretty soon have ran away from these groups because of the negativity on there is it really bad. And like I was saying before, there's a lot of people come there to learn. So yes, they're going to ask, what's the problem with dairy? What's the problem with eggs? What's the problem with backyard hens? Why is honey not vegan? What's wrong with um, grass-fed beef? They're going to ask all the questions that you'll hear many, many times. But keep in mind, like I said before, this might be the first time they've been able to ask this question. So we don't want to be attacking people when they ask these questions. 
And I suggest to people that run these groups or websites or pages, just write a simple short response and maybe link to an article or to a video or something like that that covers your response. And you can put all these in a Word document and you can copy and paste, copy and paste whenever someone says it. Don't get attached, don't get too upset about it. Copy and paste, that's my response, copy and paste, okay? And you wanna have a good balance between good information and um, positivity online. So you don't want to be saying to people all the time, um, this is the problem with backyard hens and show them all these photos of, can, of hens um, with you know, deep beaked and the feathers coming off and everything like that. Because um, graphic imagery can work really well for some people, but for most people, it's really not that effective. And we could be really um, hurting someone's head or their mental state by showing negative images and negative videos or over and over. So what I say to people in regards with graphic imagery is if you find it's something that you have to share, okay? If it's something that's really important to you or to your group or your page, just always put a warning at the top. Like, warning, this post contains graphic imagery first. First thing you do, okay? Um, and then um, I always like to follow it with something positive, okay? So you've got warning, this contains graphic imagery. Um, this is what happens to pigs in the sow, um, sow crates, some sort of information at the end. But this pig or a photo or an image, this is a pig that's been rescued from this. And this is a pig that's living out its life now in peace and can have a life for the next 20 years instead of 10 days or two weeks or whatever, depending on the animal. So do you get what I'm saying with that? Mm. If you feel it's necessary, make sure you follow it with something positive and how, and even, you know, um, a lot of animal sanctuaries, they'll show beautiful images or beautiful videos of pigs running or chickens like dust bathing and just really cute images. And they'll say, we rescue this hen from this life. With your support, we can do more. So yeah, try and, and try to have more positive things than negative things. Because it's all about marketing. In marketing, you just focus on the positive aspects. Why someone would want to be like, like someone else. Why you would want to join veganism. And if you're making it seem hard, if you're making it seem negative, um, people are not going to want to join. So we want to make it seem a, like it's a great thing to be part of. And I'm not saying let's just, you know, um, make it all happy and flowery and stuff because there's some negative stuff as well but just balance it a bit more. And um, there's so many issues that might come up online for groups, might come up online for pages. And a lot of it re is in regards to people that um, act or that react instead of act. So um, one of my top 10 tips, if you have a look um, online, if you just Google top 10 tips for online etiquette, should come up with like a little image like this. And um, I'll just go through some of these things. So if, if you're not aware of what online etiquette means, it just means to be courteous online and to be nice and kind to people online. And if you wouldn't say something um, face to face, me in front of you, if I'm not gonna say something to you, to your face, don't say it online. Most people, we're never going to meet the people we interact with online. And that, that's why a lot of people are just horrible to each other all the time. Um, words are really powerful. Um, words really have power to motivate and power to inspire. And these are the words that I love. Um, but there's words that have the ability to hurt and they have the ability to harm people as well. So I want you to think about that and choose wisely. So anyway, here's my top 10 tips for online etiquette. First one, just in day-to-day -day life as well, act, don't react. Does everyone understand the difference between that? Yeah. So a lot of people react like this, straight away. Someone said something, no, not good enough, I'm gonna react. Um, and that could be these questions people ask a lot. 
just want to act, breathe it out, take your time. Um, and for people that, you know, I, I'm sure you're all aware of people that will just go, and it's like this whole um, blog almost on Facebook about why they're upset about this thing or that person or whatever. We don't want to be that person, okay? We want to rise above that sort of behaviour. If you have something like that that you really think is important to express, write it down, in particular with a pen on paper. That would be better, actually. Taking your time, you're writing it down. Then we're going to sleep on that. The next day, if we really think it's that important to say some of those things, then type out the things you think are important. I bet most of that, you're over it by the time the next day comes around. And you can't be bothered typing out that writing either. <laughs> um, another tip is to keep private matters private. Okay? If I had a problem with you, the way you're speaking to me, something that's happened, I'll say, hey, you know that conversation we had before? I had an issue with what you said. Can we, you know, have a talk about it? Something like that. We don't need to be having those conversations so everyone online can see them. If you have a page and someone had, many people here run pages online or businesses online, so we've got a few people. So um, if you have, I've run or I have run a few or um, consult people with running pages and if you have negative feedback or negative um, customer interaction, um, you want to make sure you're responding to it first of all. And this is just anyone online as well, if they're, if they're talking to you, asking a question. You want to respond and make sure they feel as though they're being heard first. That's the first tip. And you know, the word social media marketing, those three words, what do you think is the most important word out of those? Social, exactly. So there's a lot of people that post, 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 but never interact with what's coming back. So focus on that interaction. Someone's giving you feedback, whether it's negative or positive, hey, thanks for the feedback. Appreciate you taking the time to say that. If it's negative, we say, can you please give us some more information about this? I'd really like it if you could email me or call me on this number and we'll sort it out for you offline. That's a really good way just to diffuse everything. Um, make sure you use correct spelling, grammar and punctuation. Very important. <laughs> And be really mindful of what you're sharing online. Um, something that you're sharing might, might mean something different to your boyfriend, to your um, employer, to your grandmother, for example. So just keep in mind all the different sorts of people that are going to read what you share. And be conscious of who will actually read your posts. Um, and nowadays, it's very easy for police MI5, whatever, over here, to find out a lot of things about people online. They used, there was a quote a few years ago, it used to take them three months to gather just basic information on people. Now on Facebook, three minutes. Because most people just share so much information. Um, and just be kind, you know? Be your kind self. And it's so easy to be mean, it's so easy to judge people, so we want to rise above that. And um, keep your passwords safe and really hard to guess. If you're using the same email and the same password for every single thing that you've ever signed up for, that's a bit of a worry. So we want to change that. And, a part, and when I say safe, I mean something that's not a word in the dictionary, that has numbers in it and has some, an exclamation point or some sort of symbol, a couple of um, big and small letters as well. And um, if someone you you're experiencing or you see someone bullying someone online you're able to report it you're able to say something you're able to go hey um i don't agree with what you're doing here or i think you're bullying this person can you stop you can report them you can block them whether or not facebook or twitter actually do anything about it, it's another thing but you can actually block or report people if you use anyone's creation online make sure you credit someone a lot of people don't do that anymore. And whatever you do online, take responsibility for everything. A lot of people just go, oh yeah, well I was drunk when I did that post, always drunk post. Always drunk post, or I always buy all these things on eBay when I'm drunk, you know. And you're like, well maybe you shouldn't be drinking, or <laughs> you might have a problem with eBay or drinking or something. So just be aware of those sort of things. Um, 
let's talk about trolls. Who's seen trolls online? Yeah. Who's experienced them? Who's had their own? Had a few of my own. Um, I like to try to extend empathy and compassion to my trolls, okay? <laughs> because, and yes, um, a lot of people don't do that, and um, but that's what you need to do. Because a lot of the interaction with people and a lot of trolling, it doesn't have anything to do with you, okay? How trolling and the people has nothing to do with you. It's about them. It's about things they're going through, not so happy in their life, something, something's amiss. My life's pretty awesome, you know? So it, does, it sort of bounces off most in most of the cases. And like I was saying before about pages and um, feedback, interact first with someone. If someone's just asking a question, respond back. That's fine. If they continue and you know that they're trolling you, you don't need to respond anymore. But I would suggest if you don't know this person, if it's the first time you've interacted with them, that you do respond to what they're asking. And if you know someone and you see them coming onto your page or interacting, trolling with you a lot, um, you just don't respond. Just ignore it, just delete the comment, just delete whatever they're saying. And even block report, I would do that. And you really don't need to feed the trolls. Don't give them an, any ammunition. You know, don't give them any response to come back to you with things. And um, you know, one of my friends was said something to me lately um, about, oh, all of your friends are like really awesome. Why do you have awesome friends? And I said, well, it's because I got rid of the people who weren't awesome. <laughs> you know, and some of that was conscious, some not so much. But it's really that easy to do online in particular. You can go through, oh, that person's always posting about bacon. Don't want to see that anymore, let's delete them. <laughs> or you, you don't even have to delete them. You can just block from your feed. You know, it's up to you. And um, did anyone have any questions about trolls or anything we did cover with trolls? Okay, cool. So um, I just wanted to Make sure that you focus on things outside of veganism and outside of activism as well, because there's lots of other things. Sometimes we get caught up in it all the time. And um, it's really good to make sure you sleep well. Who here loves sleep? It's awesome, isn't it? Love good <laughs> sleep, it's even better. And um, yeah, so remember to sleep well, remember to exercise. And these are things we don't all have to go home and have a sleep and exercise, you know, this afternoon. But every day, Let's try to do something new that we haven't done yesterday. Let's try and do something. And let's then try to make these things happen, okay? So we want to eat well. That means, not the cupcake I just had out, out there before, <laughs> but maybe more greens, maybe more non-processed foods, stuff like that. And we want to be grateful. There's so many awesome things. Like, not many people can, you know, come to these events, can afford to come to these events, can afford to pay for the food or for the drinks or, you know, have friends to hang out with. It's awesome. So be really grateful for these sort of things. Make sure you go outside more. I'm, I do heaps of things on the computer. I'm on the computer all the time. So, and yesterday I had a, had a big issue that I was just almost pulling my hair out a bit. And I just went down, I was in Swanage last week actually, and um, so I just went down to the pier, just walked around for an hour or so, felt much better, had decided what I was going to do about the issue. And it cleared my mind. If I was just in home from the computer, I would have just got more annoyed at things. And um, you know, be inspired and be creative. They're really great things to do. And whether that's like books, music, art, quotes, anything like that, you know, try to be inspired more by people. Try to be more creative. And get away from digital devices. Who's got their phone in their pocket? Yeah. Not the whole room, so that's good. I'm liking that. But um, if you're going to bed and the last thing you're looking at is your phone, and if when you are waking, the first thing you're looking at is your phone, maybe let's try not to do that in the future. And there's things like watches, that you can use for the time. 
you know, alarm <laughs> clocks that are on a phone that can wake you up. So many things, they're not even new things. Um, and three of my favourite words are prioritise, organise and delegate. So have a think about these things in your world. What are the things that you appreciate the most, the things you want to put more time to? What are the things you need to prioritise more? What are the things you need to organise a bit better? What are the things you prefer not to do that you want someone else to do or someone else can help you out with? And um, one of the things this year that I've learned um, since being the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society back in my home state of Queensland, I've got a massive to-do list. I've just taken over end of last year. And the lady who ran it before had been doing it for about 20 odd years. It's a lot of transition issues, okay? And um, there's a long to-do list. I was doing my head in. Because, you know, to-do lists are never ending. And in most cases, they're never going to end. So um, what I started to do was for our quarterly magazine mostly, but it really helped my head, was work out things we've achieved. So not only do I have the to-do list, I've got things we've achieved. And it really helped me when I looked at all the things I'd done, or the things we as a group had done, because we'd done quite a few things. We'd ticked off quite a few things on the list. And by comparing those two, I was like, yep, we're on the right track. So that's something that I would suggest you all to do as well. And if you need help for anything, make sure you ask for it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good to have a break from activism, good to have a break from people who are just negative or you just don't even want to hang out with them. Go and hang out with someone better, hang out with your favourite dog or cat friend, make some new friends at the beach, you know, do something exciting and different. And um, this is my first time I've been over this side of the world actually, so I'm on a three month European adventure. So I've been in um, UK most of this month, off to Europe next month, and I'm doing a lot of the vegan um, events over here, so speaking at a lot of those. So it's good to meet a lot of new people. Um, so yeah, I'd just like everyone today to focus on being the best vegan you can be. Okay? And I hope I've given you lots of different tips on ways you can do that. And I'd like all of us to think about those things and just how you can do something new each day, add something new each day. And if you've learned something today that you didn't know about, I'd really like for you to share that with someone else, how they could do some things. And I really want us to all focus on inspiring others and being compassionate and being kind to each other. It's really important to get through in this world, to move to the next stages we need to as a society or as the vegan movement. We really need to be communicating better with people. We really need to find out all what the things that we agree in, on and the things that we can all work together on and not just all the things that divide us. Because I, I don't agree 100% with any vegan group or any person. I haven't met anyone I agree 100% with yet. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? So, um, hope you've learned something today and um, you can follow my website, vivalavegan.net. I'm filming this talk, so I'll put it up online next week or the week after, depending on if I'm sunbathing in Spain or not. <laughs> um, and um, so have a look at that on my YouTube channel, and I'll put it on the event page for here as well, so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, you can follow, I've got my leashontel.com website, and all, I'm across all social media with vivalavegan.net and leashontel, so you can follow my European adventures too, if you like. <laughs> so thank you very much everyone today, and I hope you've learned something and enjoy the rest of your day.